I want to take this time to pray for our county. This is a designated weekend. To uh, It's a proclamation to uh, pray, to um, intercede as a church, as the body of Christ, churches across our county are praying for Clark County, for our city, and even for our nation and our world. And uh, so would you just take a moment, and would you bow your heads, and would you pray for Clark County? It's amazing that our council, our Clark County Council, has made this uh, declaration, this proclamation of prayer this weekend. So would you just take a moment, we'll have a moment of silence, moment of prayer, and intercede for our county, for our city, and for our world. Father God, we take a moment right here to pray, to intercede, to enter into a time of, of, of prayer, Lord, for our county, a prayer for our city, for our state, and, and Lord, even for our nation. And as we have been uh, walked through this pandemic and walked through the horrific times, the loss of uh, so many loved ones, uh, economic disaster, economic pain, and businesses going out, our schools being closed for a while, and, and, and all of these things that we've experienced, Lord, we recognize and know that we need Jesus. We need your touch. God, we need your hand upon our county. We need your hand upon our city. We need your hand upon our government and our schools and businesses and churches. And Lord, across this county, we pray that the Spirit of God would move in a mighty way, Lord Jesus, and turn people's hearts back to you. Lord, that we will bow our knee, we'll humble our heart, and we will cry out to the Lord God of heaven for our own lives, for our families, for our marriages, for our lives, and for our county and for our city. Lord Jesus, sweep across Clark County and touch this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, keep your hand upon this place. Rebuild businesses, rebuild homes and families and kids and schools. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Bring healing to our land. Lord, we humble ourselves and we cry out to you. Thank you for a, a, a council here in Clark County that recognizes that we need to pray, that we need the hand of God at work in our lives and in our hearts. And so, Lord, we declare this day and this weekend a proclamation of prayer over Clark County, over Vancouver, Washington. This is our city. This is our place. And we recognize, Lord God, that we need your hand and your blessing and your spirit to move in this place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Yes. Yes. Continue to pray for our city and for our county. This is a, a proclamation that was made by the Clark County Council. And uh, we have a copy for you if you want to pick it up from the hub there after the service. There's also points of prayer for Clark County that you can follow, and that's on the back of that. And I want to introduce you to Marty. Marty, where are you at? Right here. Stand up, Marty. This is Marty. She's our prayer coordinator. And uh, let's give her a big hand of appreciation. Thank you, Marty. If you're interested in prayer, if you're interested in connecting with our prayer team, you know, many of you fill out prayer requests every Sunday, and Marty uh, brings all those together, writes them all down, and uh, sends them out to a prayer team of 30, 40, uh, 50 people. And then every Tuesday morning, we pray one by one, all the way through naming your name, naming the need, whatever it is. And some of that time, there's 20, 25, even up to 30 prayer prayer requests that come out of the two services on Sunday morning. So let's continue to pray. Let's continue to intercede. And let's just praise God for what he's doing, even through this pandemic in our county. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing. Now, um, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Matthew 7. 
and we'll jump in here in just a moment. I, I got COVID. I won't show a, a show of hands. If we did, I would probably say, raise your hand if you haven't had COVID. I think a lot of people, man, a lot of churches, I mean, a lot of our staff here at church, we got it all at the same time. We always do things together. And uh, so we shared that together. And man, our whole work team was shut down and a whole bunch of our staff was out. But uh, I lost my taste. Such a bummer. Now, I've had a cold before and lost my taste for one or two meals, you know, and that, that's no big thing. But I, I have lost my taste for three weeks now. I can't smell anything. I can't taste anything. And of all things, I don't understand it, Julie didn't. She did not lose her. Lord, that's not fair. And she's sitting there just smiling away, eating. Want to go to Red Lobster? <laughs> While I'm eating a shoe. <laughs> the, only, the only rainbow, the only silver lining in the whole thing is, you know, all those old cans of soup in your cupboard and the stuff in the freezer that's been there since the dawn of creation? <laughs> that's what I've been eating for the last three weeks. <laughs> I figure might as well, you know, clear out the freezer, clear out the cupboards, feed it to Neil, you know, the dog and Neil. Oh, man. I, you know, praise God we're getting through this and uh, people are back and I hope it didn't hit you. It hit, hit Julie and I kind of hard, but I just want to appreciate uh, many of you know Ernie and uh, he's our head of our security and head of our project it hit him pretty hard. He actually ended up in the hospital. And, but he was back today. He is back. He might still be out there, but he's back today. And we want to praise the Lord for, for him and, and, and others being back. So, so let's jump into uh, Matthew 7, verse 1 there and following. Uh, Jesus talks about judging. Judge not lest you be judged. I want to talk about that. That's why I wore my motorcycle vest. I'm a motorcycle rider, and uh, when I take this vest off, I'm just an average, ordinary guy. But when I put this vest on, all kinds of judgments come in my life, from good to bad to weird to, you know, your bad, all, all of that. I remember uh, three, three summers ago, if you've been here at Living Hope Church for a while, you know I took a a motorcycle trip to the East Coast, and uh, from Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine, and back. It took me uh, six weeks, eight, 8,500 miles I rode, and uh, I remember a truck stop outside of Chicago. It was late at night. I uh, came through Chicago, and most of the big cities I just went around. I didn't go into but Chicago, late at night, it was about 8, 9 o'clock at night, I, I had to go to Chicago, to downtown Chicago on my motorcycle because there's something special there, Girardelli Square. <laughs> I told the manager I rode 7,000 miles to have a hot fudge sundae. <laughs> Ooh, it was so good. But leaving Chicago, it was late at night, and I, man, oh man, traffic and trucks and everything. So I didn't get to my campground in time, and I ended up at 2 in the morning at a truck stop trying to figure out what to do. It's late at night, and I'm cold, and, and I'm trying to figure out what to do. And I'm standing on the sidewalk there, and uh, there's truckers standing there. And so I struck up a conversation with them, and we began to talk. And uh, he looked at me and kind of sized me up, and, and I looked at him, and we began to talk, and he started to share a little bit about his situation and his life, and then I said, hey, can I pray for you? And man, that kind of took him by surprise. And he said, man, you're going to pray for me? And I said, yeah, let me pray for you. He says, man, that is really like weird, man. I th I, when I saw you in that leather outfit and that leather... That leather vest, man, I thought you was a bad dude. <laughs> I said, well, I'm a bad dude, but a bad dude for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And so we prayed together, and I got to know him, and 
his uh, marriage was having some struggles, and, and it was just a great time. But, but how quickly we jump to conclusions about people. And I kind of I like that about this message. It gives me so many opportunities to share with people because they don't know what's coming, but they have these assumptions about bikers and these leather vests and all of that. So we're in a series on the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus has spent, uh, he launches his three-year ministry with the Sermon on the Mount and telling people how to live effective lives as a Christ follower how you care for people, how you interact with people. And Jesus gets to this place, which is an incredible word from Jesus about judging others. And you can just imagine human nature, all the people that are gathered, they're no different than us in our society. And how easy it is to judge other people. And he says these words, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. How do you show love and grace and acceptance to others? And yet confront destructive decisions, destructive choices. How do you walk with people through difficult times and yet not be judgmental? I've, we've raised a, a large family, and there have been times that, that my children have made bad choices. And it's, it's been so hard on us and hard on Julie and I. And, and you see your kids grow up and, and, and make these destructive choices, and it just grieves our hearts. Some of you are there. You have children that have made destructive choices. And they face the consequences, and it affects us as parents. It affects the people around them. How do you love them? How do you walk through this time with them and yet confront the bad choices, the decisions, people around you that have made bad decisions and choices? How do you confront that? Now, the answer that we, you know, we as Christians, we like these little pat answers. And there's been a pat answer that we've used for years and uh, it goes like this, love the sinner, but hate the sin. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, we've used that. If you've been around church a while, you've heard that before. The problem with that is it doesn't work anymore. Our culture and our society has changed things. They've done two things that have blurred the lines. And one of them is that they have taken... And, and there's no separation now between sin and what's wrong and the sinner, the person. They've blurred the lines. Everyone lives a lifestyle. This is the lifestyle that I've chosen to live. And if you're going to love and accept the person, you need to accept the lifestyle. See, that's the, that's the catch there. They're one and the same in people's minds. If you reject my lifestyle, you're rejecting me. If you say no to the decisions and the choices I'm making, then you're saying no to me. Maybe you have somebody in your family that's like that. Maybe you have children that are making those choices, friends or people you work with. The second thing, which is as bad as the first or almost as bad or worse is that our society, our culture, has systematically removed God's Word and God's principles from virtually everything that we do. Our government, our schools, our colleges, businesses, the media, they've taken the Word of God out. Don't listen to this. It's antiquated. There's contradictions. You don't need to listen to this anymore. And if they do portray God, if the media portrays God or portrays any kind of Christianity, most of the time it's being made fun of. It's a joke. God is a joke. It breaks my heart as a father when my own family, in our own family, our children have made choices that are not good. It breaks your heart. Some of you have kids right now that are right there. You're praying for them. But they've made destructive choices. 
It breaks my heart as a pastor to see people here at Living Hope Church, people that I've walked with and, 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 and grown with and, and we've shared life together and, and shared ministry together and all of a sudden I hear this person has made a bad choice, a destructive decision and it's affecting their life. They're facing the consequences. Maybe that's you. Maybe there's a time that you walked with the Lord Jesus but, but life became complicated and and you began to make choices that, that led you down a road that you didn't want to go down. And all of a sudden today you find yourself a long way from where God wants you to be. The reason that so many people end up in, in tough situations, making choices that bring consequences in our life that God doesn't want, that we don't want, the people that love us or love, around us that love us don't want, now listen to me, is because they view the principles of God's word like the laws of the land. Their options. The laws, you know the laws. You can't speed, you can't run a stop sign, you can't, you know, cut across a four-way. You know the laws of the land, but really, honestly, let's be honest. They're options, right? <laughs> How many of you sped on the way to church this morning? Because <laughs> you were late. I ride a motorcycle. And the speed sign, the speed limit sign says 60. But man, my bike just, it cruises at 70. <laughs> Manufacturer's specs right there. And if you ride a Harley, man, it doesn't even stop vibrating until you hit 80 miles an hour. <laughs> right? They're options. And that's the way people view God's word. These are options. God says, don't do that. Well, I want to do it, though. And so it's an option. Maybe I'll listen to him. Maybe I won't. God says, stay away from this, man. It's going to burn you. There's consequence. Well, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. But listen, now hear me. The laws of God, the principles of God's word, are not like the laws of the land. They are like the laws of nature. Okay? The law of gravity. If I jump off of a building, it's not an option. I'm going down. I am going to hit the ground, and if it's a tall building, I'm in trouble. You can't jump off and go, well, I think I'll fall, or I think I'll float or I think I'll do this, or whatever. They're not options. Things are going to happen. That's the, the principles of God's Word. It's not like we can choose, pick and choose. It's like God says, this is going to happen. This is going to happen in your marriage if you do this. This is going to happen with your children if you do this. This is going to happen in your life. It's the law of nature. If I go around the corner too fast on my motorcycle, I am going to end up in a tree, hopefully. And it's not a cliff. It's not an option. It's going to happen. See, that's how we have to view God's Word. We have to view His Word as, as God, i got to do this. That's why Jesus says, hear and obey. Listen to my commandments. If you say that you love me, keep my Word. It's so important. And a lot of times it's like, for us, it's like, oh, geez, God, do I have to? Man, I want to go to that party, and I want to party, 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 party. That's my middle name. Please, God. And God is just saying, look, you're going to jump off a building, and you're going down. So don't go there. See, these options that people have. And God says, listen, listen to me. The principles of God's Word are there to build our lives. And so when we, when we face these in our own lives personally, and we face these in the lives of other people around us, and we love them, they're our children, they're our family, and we want to walk together, how do we, how do we share these with love and, and, and encouragement and yet confront the choices, confront the sin? The, the rebellion against God, people who have turned their backs on God. How do we do that? How do we judge not, lest you be judged? Jesus makes two really important points here. 
or statements in the words that follow. I'm going to start with the, the second one first, and then I'm going to go to the first one that he says second. So if you've got your Bibles open, we've got it on the screen. We're in verse 3. I want you to start first with your own life. Don't judge others. Don't look at the lives of others. Don't point fingers at others. Start with your own life first. Stand in the mirror. Yeah, that, that's, you. that's Jesus said it. I'm just borrowing the words from him. It's a good place to start. Start with your own life first. Why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eyes. Jesus lays out a truth that we have all experienced. People who go around judging others usually have more problems in their lives than the people they're judging. And they're pointing fingers so that all the attention goes away from them. Jesus says, start with your own life first. Realize, Romans 3, 23, we have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. Who in this place can stand up and say, well, I'm perfect enough to point out the sin in the rest of you. In fact, that's my spiritual gift is pointing out sin in people's lives. I've been doing it for years. I don't have any friends. Nobody wants to go to dinner with me. But that's my gifting in the church. <laughs> Jesus says, start with your own life first. Let's look at our own heart. Let's start with kneeling at the cross and saying, Lord Jesus, my heart has been far away from you. Being honest with Jesus about our own failures and our own sin, our struggles, and finding his love and grace and forgiveness in our lives, and then extending that love and grace and forgiveness to others around us. That's where we start. That's what Jesus tells us to do. Amen. That's right. That's right. Now let's back up to the first one. Judge not lest you be judged. The sense here that Jesus is talking about in the context of how he says to remove the speck from your own eye before you try to deal with anybody else is the idea that there needs to be a relationship with people. We build a relationship and we earn the right to speak into their lives. Give the oppor gain the opportunity to speak through building relationships. Now let's unpack this word a little bit. When Jesus says, judge not, lest you be judged, he's talking about judging other people based on first impression, based on outward appearance, based on how they look, based upon just meeting them for the first time or briefly knowing them, how easily we jump to conclusions about people's lives. In fact, this is one of the, 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 the main issues across our country. This is where injustice comes and, and racism and prejudice and all of these things because it's our human nature to jump to conclusions and condemn people, say things about people, speak about people, even gossip or spread rumors. And worst of all, to, to hold things against people because of the judgments that we've made. I was watching the Olympics with Julie the other night, and that poor 15-year-old skater came on that's, you know, had tested for dope, and she didn't pass, and now there's all this controversy and, uh, around her life and everything, and and Julie had walked down the hallway, and I said, hey, this, the, the, the skater, the drug addict is going to skate now. <laughs> and I just caught myself. That's exactly what Jesus said. Don't do. Don't jump to conclusions about it. I don't know her. I don't know her family. I don't know her situation. I don't know how she's clear over in Russia. And here I am, based on a little bit of information, jumping to a conclusion. 
and call her name. Lord, forgive me. I should have never done that. But at least it was in my home to Julie, and I don't even think Julie heard me. So hopefully. How many times have you pulled up to the, the stop sign, and there's the guy asking for some money? And you said, man, why don't you get a job? How many times you're watching the news, and they arrest a guy with tattoos? Well, he's got tattoos on. He's got a motorcycle vest on, so he must be guilty. I'm sure he did it. He sure looks like a guilty guy. We make all these judgments. We can get away with it in society, but where it really hurts is right here in the church. Right here in the church with each other. In our marriages, in our families. Wife jumps to a conclusion about her husband. Husband jumps to a conclusion about his wife. We jump to a conclusion about our kids. We really don't know. And see, that's what Jesus is going to say. We're going to get into the rest of it next week. But you really don't know what's going on in a person's life. Withhold judgment. And the worst thing to do is to put it in the form of a prayer request. Oh, man, I've been in prayer groups where we need to pray for brother so-and-so. He was out at the, the gambling hall the other night, and I'm sure he's got a gambling problem, so we need to pray for him. That's where we take the judgments, the things that we say about people and think about people, and turn them into rumor and gossip. And now it's gone even further, and it becomes destructive and hurtful and painful. Maybe some of you right here this morning You've experienced that. You know what it's like to be on the end of that pointing finger. They don't know anything about you. They don't know anything about your situation. But they're judging you. They're pointing their finger at you. Jesus says as a Christ follower, we have the responsibility to, e to encourage each other. To pray for each other. To speak into each other's lives. But we must win the right to do that. We must build relationships together. Learn about people that are around us. That we have that opportunity to hear them. To hear their heart. To hear what they've gone through. Where they're at in life. And then we can speak into that for each other. Maybe you're on the other end. You're that one that's been the, 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 the person judged. You've had that finger pointed at you. And there's hurt in your heart right now. In fact, really, let's be honest. Maybe someone here is really brokenhearted. Maybe you're brokenhearted over it. Maybe it scarred your life. Maybe there were things that happened in your life that, that to you or, or that you were accused of or somebody pointed the finger or, or, or maybe you deserved it. Maybe there were some things that you did and man, you were at a time in your life where you're away from the Lord and instead of coming alongside you and loving you and caring for you, they just stepped back. They threw up their hands and said, ah, we're done with you. And they just pointed their finger at you. Maybe that's you this morning. And sometimes those places in our life, those broken places lead us to do things and lead us to places that are hard to get, get out of. They lead to, to a broken heart. Thursday night we, we talked about the lies of the enemy. Seven different lies. I, I've, I've blown it. I'll never be right with God. I don't have hope in my life. It's always going to be this way. I can't ever do anything right. It's all these lies that the enemy whispers in our ear. And I'm telling you right now, don't believe the lie. Start building your life on the truth of who God is and what He's done for you. And you can start right now. You can start this morning. You can begin to understand what God says about you and the truth about you. As you have followed Jesus Christ, if you have staken your life on Jesus Christ, you are loved by God. You are forgiven by God. You are chosen by God. You have been set free through Jesus Christ. And you are a child of God. Don't ever forget that. That's who we are. 
in Jesus Christ. I am a child of God. I want you to bow your heads with me right now. In fact, let's just stand up. Just go ahead and stand up. Just stand up with me. Worship team is coming out here. I want to pray for you. I know that people this morning, there's been things that have happened to you. There's been pain. There's been judgment. There's been criticism. There's been places in your heart that, that you've been broken hearted over those things that have happened to you. I want to pray for you. I want to share before the Lord Jesus those things together right here, at, right now. And I've experienced it too. I don't stand here as one who's never experienced that. I've experienced that. I've had my heart broken. People People who I thought were there for me were not there for me, and it left me in a really hurting situation. I understand that. But right now, we're going to declare victory in Jesus Christ. We're going to pray. We're going to trust Him, and we're going to break that bondage that Satan has in our life over those strongholds, over brokenness in our life, over hurt or pain or things that have happened in our life. And I want to do that right now. I want you just to come forward. If that's you, come and join me right up here at the front and we'll pray together. Just step out from wherever you're at and come on up as we sing this song together and we'll pray at the end together. Just come right on up and stand right here. Pastor Neil, that's me. I've experienced that and I want to be free of it this morning. I want to be done with it. Just come on up right now. Just come on up. All right, anybody else? I'm going to pray. Let me pray first before we sing, okay? Let me pray here. Anybody else? Just come on up wherever you're at. Join me here at the front. All right, we're going to pray right now, okay? And we're going to lift this up to Jesus right now. Anybody else? Come on now. This is your moment. God's tugging at your heart. He's speaking to your heart. And you know, you know, I don't have to tell you. God doesn't have to tell you. You know who it is. You know when it happened. You know what you dealt with as you walked through life. Maybe it was when you were young, maybe older, maybe a friend, maybe a family member. But we want to be free right now in Jesus. Come on up. Anybody else? We're going to pray together. Mom bringing her son. Man, that's awesome. Kids, kids, you're, you're right here with me. No, you're not. You're in kids' world. <laughs> anybody else okay let me pray with you right now you speak this out speak the words to Jesus Christ right now yes and if you're if you're comfortable if you're okay as a family of God surrounding these people with your love just extend your hand out okay in prayer with me over all of these that God sets them free today, right now, free in Jesus Christ. That's what we pray. Speak it out with me right now. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you know my heart. You know that I've been hurt. I've been broken by people in my past. I surrender that to you. I give it to you right now. Lord Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, come and heal my broken heart. Restore the joy to my life through Jesus Christ. I surrender my life to you. And I pray in Jesus' name, that you would break that chain that has held me back in my life. Break the stronghold of the enemy. Restore healing, wholeness, love, joy, and peace, and hope in my life in Jesus Christ I trust you now forgive me of my sin all that I've done 
from this day forward, I will follow you. Thank you, Jesus. And from this day forward, I will never forget that I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's rejoice in the Lord Jesus. Let's rejoice in Him, you guys. Let's rejoice in Him. Hey, just stay put right where you're at. Stay put, because we want to sing over you this song. I am a child of God, okay? Lead us, you guys. Lead us. If you want to join us at the front to sing and worship, this is our declaration today. We're putting the past behind us. We're pressing to the forward, and we will never forget. I am a child of God. Here we go. Okay. Don't ever forget that. Okay? You are a child of God. Go home, stand in the mirror, point to the person in the mirror, say you are a child of God. And don't let the enemy ever pull you down with the lies. Just tell him to take a hike to where he belongs, H-E-L-L, hockey sticks or whatever. (laughs) Hey, real quick, real quick, what about the person that you have built a relationship with? What about the person you've been reaching out to and praying for and going to the Blazer game with, the guy you work with at work that just doesn't want to respond to Jesus? What do you do with that guy? Come next week and you'll find out. (laughs) God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you this week at Living Free and Living Word.